and you really have no idea how this works yet, but we'll get to that in just a second. For now, I just want you to realize that when atoms bond together, it lowers the energy of the system. I'm not going to draw the curved arrows for how these atoms came together, because that deals with free radicals and that would just confuse you right now. We'll save that for the free radicals chapter, okay? Just realize right now that each of these atoms of hydrogen had one valence electron, and they're sharing those electrons in a covalent bond. But okay, that was the Lewis structure diagram. Let me show you the same concept of bonding using an orbital diagram. All right, so orbital diagram. Okay, so these two orbitals are gonna to come together and form a bond. Just like we saw these two atoms of hydrogen come together and form a bond, except this time we're drawing the actual shapes of the orbitals, okay? So how are they gonna do this? They're gonna form a bond by overlapping their atomic orbitals, like this. So here's one orbital. Uh, overlapping with another, okay? And guess what? The area of overlap in between them right here, this is the bond, okay? They're sharing electrons. So if you want, imagine that, hey, here's the electrons hanging out inside here. There's one, two valence electrons hanging outside, the, or hanging inside that overlapping region. And another name for this area of overlap is the bonding molecular orbital, okay? So let's write that down. This is the bonding MO, the bonding molecular orbital. And hey, you guys, just so you know, this orbital diagram with these overlapping atomic orbitals is just another way of drawing this, right, you guys? So hey, this is just another way of drawing this as well, right? Two hydrogens sharing two electrons, just like we had these two hydrogens sharing electrons, okay? An orbital diagram and a Lewis structure are just two ways of representing the same idea. It's just saying that, hey, these two hydrogens are being bonded together by sharing electrons in this overlapping region, okay? So, hey, let's go ahead and define this bonding molecular orbital a little bit more, okay? So let me erase this right here so we could have a little bit more space. Okay, so this area of overlap right here this is going to be the bonding molecular orbital. And this is equal to the area where two atomic orbitals of the same sign overlap and share their electrons, okay? So this is the area where two atomic orbitals of the same sign same sign overlap okay so basically you guys this same sign thing this has to do with math, okay? And in order for two atoms to bond, you have to make sure that their atomic orbitals are of the same sign. But hey, you guys, chemistry isn't about math, right? It's about visualizing. So let's do a quick demonstration to show you visually how this same sign thing works, okay? Okay, so what does this same sign thing mean, you guys? Well, if two atoms want to bond, they need to have their atomic orbitals come together and overlap. But in order for atomic orbitals to overlap, they need to be of the same sign. If atomic orbitals are of opposite signs, then those two atoms are just going to come together and repel away. Okay, so this can be a confusing concept to imagine, so we're going to try to do a little demonstration to clarify this. Okay, so this is Natasha, she's going to be helping us out today. Go ahead and say hello. Hello. Okay, so Natasha and I are both going to be playing the part of atoms. Atoms with atomic orbitals that want to overlap and form a bond. Okay, so we're going to be representing atomic orbitals with our arms, and we're going to be putting our arms in different orientations to represent atomic orbitals in different signs. Okay, so let's show you what we're talking about. Okay, so if Natasha were to put her arms, her atomic orbitals, in this orientation, then I would say that this is her sign. 
And if I wanted to be of the same sign, I would put my arms, my atomic orbitals, in the exact same orientation. This way, when we as atoms come together with atomic orbitals of the same orientation, we can overlap and form a bond. Compare this to if our arms, our atomic orbitals, were of opposite orientation like this, now if we came together, we would still come together, but this time we would repel away since our atomic orbitals were of opposite orientation. Okay, so let's say this one more time. Same orientation, then we're gonna come together and be able to overlap and form a bond. If our atomic orbitals are of opposite orientation like this, then when we come together, we're going to repel away. Okay, so take home message, you guys. If two atoms want to bond, they need to have their atomic orbitals come together and overlap. And in order for them to overlap, they need to be of the same sign. If atomic orbitals are of the opposite sign, then those two atoms are just going to come together and repel away. Okay, so hopefully this makes it a little bit easier to understand. Thanks a lot, Tosh. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that demonstration, but uh, check it out, you guys, because I want you to understand that there's two types of molecular orbitals you can have. There's the one we just talked about, where the two atomic orbitals are of the same sign, so they came together and you form a bond. So hey, one type of molecular orbital is this bonding molecular orbital that we just talked about. But this is in comparison to an anti-bonding molecular orbital where the two atomic orbitals have opposite signs and they repel and so they don't form a bond, okay? So hey, you can also have an anti-bonding molecular orbital, okay? And this is equal to the area where two atomic orbitals overlap of the opposite sign, okay? So this is the area where two atomic orbitals overlap of opposite signs. And so they don't overlap in this case, they're going to repel. And this would look like this. So if you draw two separate atoms like this, with a space in between them, because they are repelling each other in their space, they're not overlapping. And we indicate that they're repelling by drawing two lines like this. Okay, so hey, these lines indicate that they are repelling each other. This shows that these two atoms not only aren't making a bond with each other, they're actually repelling away from each other. And this area where they're repelling, where they're not bonding right here, this is known as the anti-bonding molecular orbital, okay? And this is the area where two atomic orbitals of opposite signs repel each other. Okay, you guys, so I told you before that when you combine these two separate atoms together, you lower their overall total energy. And I told you to take my word on that. Let me show you how that happens now, though. Okay, so when you look at these atoms, these two atoms separately, it's like I don't understand why these two hydrogens are higher in energy as separate atoms than if you combine them into a molecule. So check this out, you guys. Before I tell you why this is the case, let me just tell you why this is even an important thing to know. Because I'm not just teaching you this to waste your time or show you how much stuff I know, okay? There's actually a reason why I'm bringing all this energy stuff up. Because, hey, what were those relationships I told you were so important to know during our GCHEM review? So I asked you what's favored in chemistry, stability or instability? And you told me stability was favored. And then we made the relationship between energy and stability. We said that things are, that are low in energy are high in stability. And high stability means low reactivity. And this is the reason why I'm bringing this energy stuff up here. We said that low stability, high energy things will always react to form higher stability, lower energy things. And this is exactly what's going on. The reason that these two hydrogens are going to combine into this one hydrogen molecule is because it increases their stability and lowers their energy. And this is the reason for all reactions in chemistry. And it's good for you to start thinking about reactions in these terms, okay? So now that you know why it's important, let me show you how this happens. All right, so check this out, you guys. Hey, what would you say occupies the least amount of space, the least amount of mass? These two separate hydrogens or these two overlapping hydrogens? Which one of these takes up the less space? The overlapping hydrogens, right? Because, hey, they're sharing space, meaning that they take up the least amount of mass compared to the two individual hydrogens. 
And guess what? Have you guys heard of Einstein's equation? E equals mc squared? E equals mc squared, where energy is directly proportional to mass? Yeah? So would it make sense to tell you guys that the lower your mass, the lower your energy is going to be? Yeah, right, because they're proportional. Do you guys see that? Energy is directly proportional to mass. Decrease your mass, decrease your amount of energy, okay? And if you decrease the amount of energy, then you increase your stability, okay? So mathematically, this makes sense for these two individual hydrogens to go to this one combined molecule because it lowers the energy and therefore increases the stability. And hey, chemistry, reactions all favor stability, right, you guys? Okay, so let me illustrate to you what's happening when you form a molecular orbital one other way, okay? So, hey, I meant to bring in the exact same shoe boxes, okay? But I didn't have another exact same shoe box, so I had to bring in two different shoe boxes. But, hey, let me just tell you right now that each one of these shoe boxes is just an atomic orbital, the atomic orbital of each of these hydrogens, okay? So, hey, check this out, you guys. What is a molecular orbital? A molecular orbital is the overlap of atomic orbitals to lower the energy of the system. So check it out. The atomic orbital of one hydrogen has one electron. So it's got one shoe in it, one electron in it, right? The atomic orbital of the other hydrogen has one electron in it. It has one shoe in it, right? So hey, one of my atomic orbitals has one electron. The other atomic orbital has the other electron. And they're like, hey, we both want two electrons in an orbital. So why don't we hook up and get together and we can have two electrons and be stable, right? So guess what? They hook up and be stable in a molecular orbital, the overlap of two atomic orbitals, okay? So, hey, what's going on is, this guy, this guy's like, hey, I have one electron in here. And this guy's like, hey, I have one electron in here. We can pool together and make a bond. So guess what? They're gonna combine their atomic orbitals. They overlap their atomic orbitals to share electrons in a molecular orbital and form a bond. So, hey, check it out. This guy has one electron in him. This guy has another electron. So what's gonna happen is, is that they're going to now share these electrons. They're gonna share these electrons, overlap their atomic orbitals to lower the overall energy of the system. And check it out, you guys, that's the bond right there. This is where the overlapping electrons are in. So, hey, here's one atomic orbital, it's overlapping with the other atomic orbital, and there's the two electrons that are being shared, okay, you guys? And how does this lower the overall energy of the system? Well, it takes up less space, less mass than if we would have had two separate shoe boxes, right? We've only got one overlapping set of shoe boxes instead of two individual shoe boxes, okay? So hey, lower the mass,